Good afternoon. Welcome again to the Bethany Reform, uh, Associate Reformed Presbyterian Church as we come together for our Thursday afternoon devotion time. And today we're going to be looking again at Charles Spurgeon's evening reading. And the passage before us is going to come from Psalm 24.4. So let's go ahead and go to the Lord in prayer. Gracious Heavenly Father, we give thanks again. For you have blessed us with another week. We especially give thanks for the warmth of this day. It reminds us, again, of the spring that is on the horizon. And dear God, though we have uh, many more weeks of winter to go, dear God, we are those who rest and hope in the future blessings, not only of providence, but of the assurity that we have of the second coming of Jesus Christ. And dear God, may you help us uh, this day and every day to walk by faith and not by sight to walk in remembrance of your goodness and of the purposes upon which you have called us, not only to live today, but to live a life of hope in our Savior. And in Christ's name we pray. Amen. Well, today we turn to Psalm 24.4. He who has clean hands and a pure heart, who does not lift up his soul, to what is false, and does not swear deceitfully. Outward practical holiness is a very precious mark of grace. It is unfortunately true and to be feared that many professors of the Christian religion have perverted the doctrine of justification. This doctrine of justification by faith alone is treated in such a way that it makes us consider good works to be not only useless, but to even look on them with contempt. But we must say that if we look upon good works in such a way, if we think them unnecessary to the Christian life, then those who do not rest in these true things will receive everlasting contempt at the last great day. If our hands are not clean, let us wash them in Jesus' precious blood. And so let us lift up pure hands unto God. But dear believer, clean hands, it must be said, will not suffice unless they are connected with a pure heart. True religion is heart work. We may wash the outside of the cup and the plate as long as we please. But if the inward parts be filthy, we are filthy altogether in the sight of God. For our hearts are more, more truly ourselves than our hands are. And what we do on the outside is reflected by what's on the inside. The very life of our being is in that inner nature. And hence, this imperative call for purity in the heart. The pure in heart shall see God. All others are but blind bats. The man who is born for heaven... Psalm 119, 105 uh, reminds us, does not lift up his soul to what is false. All men have their joys by which their souls are lifted up. The worldling lift up his soul in carnal delights, which are merely empty vanities. But the saint loves more substantial things. Like Jehoshaphat, he is lifted up in the ways of the Lord. He who is content with husks will be reckoned with the swine. Let me ask you this question, Professor. Does the world satisfy you? Do you find hope and peace in the things of this life and not in Christ? Then you have your reward and portion in this life. And make much of it, for you will know no other joy. 
We hear the scriptures tell us that we are not to swear deceitfully. And we know that saints are men of honor. The Christian man's word is his only oath. But that, it must be said, is as good as the oath of twenty other men. For false speaking will shut any man out of heaven. For a liar shall not enter God's house, whatever may be his profession. Reader, does the text before us condemn you? Or does it rather provide you with assurance as you ascend into the hill of the Lord? Amen. And the question that we see here in the evening reading is one that we must take seriously. Is our profession of faith borne out in the life that we lead? The Bible is very concerned that there be a follow-through in the life that we have. That we not merely be Christians on the Lord's Day, but that we be Christians every day. And how we treat our neighbors, how we treat our boss, how we treat our fellow fellow employees or those who work under us, or even the checkout girl at the food line. All of that reflects who we really are. And if we are like the world in that regard, then we need to ask questions of our heart as to why this is the case. That's why at the beginning of what Spurgeon was reading for us today, he spoke about the necessity of good works in the Christian life. Again, we do not believe that good works are the basis of our salvation. We do not believe that good works are a part of our salvage. However, we do believe the scriptures to teach that they are a necessary part of our salvation because they show the work that the Holy Spirit does in our hearts. Just as an apple tree cannot produce peaches, so too a Christian cannot produce sin. And so as we close our time together, what kind of works do you produce? Do you produce those works fit for the kingdom or for this world? And if the latter is the case, well, then how can we move from doing the bidding of the flesh to the bidding of heaven? Well, the first thing we're called to do is to remember our Savior. Look at the cross. Remember the beauty of his sacrifice for sin and know that in the midst of these things, Christ has forgiven you of your trespasses and your transgressions. And seek the power of the Holy Spirit for the transformed life. Because it's not something that we can gin up within ourselves. We are born from above. And we must receive help from above. Create in me a clean heart, O God, cried the psalmist. And that is the cry that we have, both this day and forevermore. Take care, and God bless. And have a wonderful weekend, and especially, let us look forward to the Lord's Day and the worship of God's people in God's house. Take care.